we do have to come up with a solution and there's no doubt that we need a really clear plan for winter as to how we manage because it will be busy. Um, there's no doubt about that. And it's going to take all of us working together through the, the government, the hospitals, the specialists within the hospitals and primary care to come up with solutions in, in the short term, the bigger term, the longer term solutions are definitely through workforce and infrastructure and resources. Yes. The, on that on that plan for winter, though, are you confident from what you're hearing that we've we've got something that is going to a, at least mitigate against this sort of situation? Uh, in all honesty, no, I'm not confident um, because we don't know. We don't know what those solutions are. How much of a factor is COVID in this? I mean, I know we're not reporting it as much now. It isn't as much in the public consciousness, but there are still, you know, lots of people in hospital and people still dying um, from this uh, disease. How much of a factor is, is COVID in... I think COVID's not having a direct impact. COVID is another disease that we deal with. And obviously there is complexity around COVID because of the isolation and the other factors that are involved with that disease. But it's just another disease process that is just as part of the complexity of what we deal with. So it's not because, of, it's definitely not because of COVID. If you had a magic wand or had an unlimited budget, what would you be doing right now? Right now it would be about workforce, um, but we're in a global market and there's a global workforce shortage. We have to think outside the square and look, if I had a, if I had a magic wand it would be about increasing the workforce immediately and then really getting into the infrastructure and making sure we've got buildings that can actually cope with the amount of patients that we're seeing. Mm. Thanks for your time this morning. Uh, Dr Kate Allen there, who represents the Australasian College of Emergency Medicine. It's 21 minutes past eight. Well, joining me now is Dr Mark Shepard, the Interim Director of Te Whata Ora Auckland. Kia ora, good morning. Kia ora, guys. It's current here. It happens quite a bit, that one. Uh, listen, this issue that happened on Monday night, how rare is it and how concerning is it? Firstly, um, uh, um, apologise to the um, the patients in Fano who experienced significant delays and um, and uh, and experienced uh, you know difficulties accessing our care on um, you know through Sunday and Monday. Um, I think also I really want to um, start by thanking um, our staff, our Kaimahi and St John's, who all contributed to to solving that problem and keeping um, the public safe. Um, this is a really unusual, um, I guess, uh, in terms of its severity, but as you've just heard from Kate, I think the system is under significant pressure. Um, I think, uh, you know, for me, uh, this uh, is an example of the system uh, finding, uh, you know, solutions. I think that's what people expect um, to Fadawara to be able to do is to share workload uh, and to problem solve around that. Um, but of course, uh, it's not the, the experience uh, that we're hoping to provide the public. How do, finding solutions is one way to put it, isn't it? Because you don't want this to happen again. I know you had to deal with the situation and you dealt with it, but yep. you can't allow this to happen again. What is being done to ensure it doesn't? Look, I think two things. The first is, uh, you know, I think that um, we, as you've heard from Kate, we're worried about the whole system. We're looking um, as a, as Te Whareawara across the whole system, looking at a whole range of contributions from primary care through to our own facility. Uh, I think we've learnt uh, a lot through previous winters and through COVID, uh, and uh, you know, there's a whole range of actions that we are carrying out. Uh, to try and uh, make the experience uh, and, uh, and our services better. Well, it doesn't sound like... I mean, you will have heard from Dr Kate Allen there who she said she didn't feel that there was a plan, in particular, with winter looming. I think what she said was uh, she uh, herself couldn't have any uh, immediate simple solutions. I don't think that means there's... No, I'm pretty about, sure she said she didn't feel like there was a plan for dealing with this. No, well, look, I think uh, I think there's a national uh, a plan uh, for flow uh, that uh, we're all uh, cognizant of and working on. I think we have a range. Well, of, well give us some uh, give us some details of that then, because you can put her mind at ease. Yeah, sure. So I think uh, the details include uh, working with primary gear, improving access to that, using uh, pharmacies to provide gear. I think it's about talking to the public about 
seeking primary care early. It's about uh, maximising our opportunity around uh, COVID and influenza vaccination. It's talking to the public about measles and um, and pertussis vaccination. Uh, I think it's about uh, seeking to maximise uh, our opportunities around the workforce, utilising alternative workforces and making sure staff are working at top of scope. Uh, making sure that we uh, that we have systems to get early discharge, to use uh, things like hospital in the home, which we've used through COVID, uh, to make sure that we're able to support people in the community uh, maximally and to um, and to allow them to leave hospital um, when it's safe to do so. So there's a there's a range of, uh, of things. That, that all sounds great, but I mean, it doesn't, the underlying issue was is, was workforce, isn't it? And that was the one. I suppose you can't deal with that immediately or can you? Is there any way to boost the workforce in the short term to deal with what we're going to see in winter? Oh, look, I think there's a couple of things. I think the first is really supporting our workforce uh, and making sure uh, that they are uh, feeling supported, that we, uh, we thank them and, uh, and, uh, and work with them because it's incredibly hard to be working in the system at the moment. Um, and I really want to, um, you know, do want to take the time to, to thank all of our workers uh, through the system. Sure. I think that I think that there are, um, you know, I think that we are looking to recruit uh, as much as we possibly can. We've seen some positives around nursing recruitment, and you know, there's obviously a workforce strategy around that. Mm. And then I think, yeah. just very, uh, we're just about short of time, but I just wanted to pick up on one thing which you mentioned, and I was curious about. You want pharmacists to do more. What what more do you want them to do at the pharmacy? Oh no, I think that uh, you will see through COVID that there's opportunities uh, in COVID yeah, that there's opportunities uh, and you know, we've, we've had some pilot schemes around uh, the accessing of uh, medications, the, uh, the ability to vaccinate, those sorts of things. So I think we need to look at all of our workforces and understand um, how they can contribute to the system. Dr Mike Shepard, thanks very much for your time. That is the Interim Director of Te Whata Ora Auckland, 26 minutes past 8. And you're listening to Morning Report. Just to, to update you on that traffic news this morning, it was a bit more than that, really, wasn't it? It was like a scene from Die Hard Told, this highly flammable gas and canisters which blew up uh, on the northbound lanes near the Papakura on ramp. So that's caused major delays on the southern motorway this morning. It's closed from Pakanini to Papakura for traffic headed into the city due to this fire. Also, some issues this morning in the Waikato uh, Police are responding to a serious crash there. It's near Otoro Hanga. Police were advised about 7 this morning that a car crashed into a bridge between Kakamutu Road and Kiel Kiel Station Road. It's been blocking, what, well, both lanes, is it, of the bridge there. And there is uh, traffic management in place there, but um, you're going to have to expect delays. As you are, if you are on the Tapiti Coast this morning and travelling on State Highway 1, is a crash blocking one lane on the State Highway 1. One why can I on ramp? Now it's 27 minutes past eight. Let's go now to this issue of the RNZ TVNZ merger, which has been canned or killed off, as you would know, but they're still spending money on it. Let's talk to Melissa Lee, who's the broadcasting spokesperson for the National Party. Kia ora, good morning to you. Good morning, Diane. The tap's still running on the expenditure for this. Uh, this is something that you squirrelled out, is it, through um, uh, answers to parliamentary written questions? That's right, that's right. I wanted to find out how much money uh, the government was actually paying uh, to the board because uh, they were technically contracted until June 2023. And considering the fact that the um, merger is at the end, media was actually canned in February. I expected it to have actually closed off already, but uh, it seems they're continuing to pay them at least until the end of the month. This is like, you know, how to kill a vampire, really, isn't it? I mean, you, you, you can't... You, 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 the thing's dead, but it just it keeps moving. No, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, in a, in a private world, in a, in a, when, somebody, when they decide to can something, it, the, all the work actually stops. And this is not some board that's actually doing a lot of work to, uh, you know, sort of, I don't know, have work that is continuing. This was the establishment board to establish Aotearoa New Zealand Public Media. Aotearoa well, New Zealand I Public Media is not being established. Well, so I guess it's now that... Working? 
Well, it's the disestablishment board now, is it? <laughs> well, um, I think maybe they should. Well, of this but, you government, know, this is a typical of this government money. wasting I mean, the, the taxpayers' money. money. I mean, the, the amount of money that they're wasting. I mean, they're supposed to be group four level one governance group.